I'm Ellen with RV New England and I'm here with Emily Franson of Speedway Sports Park in Loudon, New Hampshire. And we're here to talk about the camping experience you can have in this particular part of New England. So, Emily, tell me a little bit about the history of Speedway Sports Park. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my father-in-law purchased the 13 acres that we own, nestled right in the middle of New Hampshire Speedway about 25 years ago. It was the perfect timing because then they started introducing racing events. Now, you're open for the two NASCAR events. Next year, there will only be one NASCAR event. Is that true? In the past, we've been open for both NASCAR events, July and September. They got rid of the September one, and so we'll only open for July. However, they just announced that they're going to offer a modified racing series, and so we'll open for that too. Now, I thought I'd heard when we were here the last time that you're considering adding extra events. We're thinking about opening for Laconia Bike Week, which is Excellent. right down the road. It's an amazing time. I think that the bikers need more places to camp and hang out than what the town of Loudoun has. So we will probably open for that. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about is this is sort of a dry camp campground. Yes. There's no electrical hookups, uh, no sewer hookup. Uh, could you give some suggestions and recommendations to campers who might be coming to this particular campground or campground like it for the very first time? Yes, I think that the campers, when they come into the office, fill up your water tank. You're going to need water. Uh, when you're at home, making sure make sure your camper's all set to go. Make sure everything's working correctly. Bring a generator. Make sure that your black water and gray water is all emptied so that you don't run into a problem like that. <laughs> And on your black water and your gray water tanks, you here have two options for people wanting to sort of eliminate waste for their tanks. Could you talk about this for a little bit? Sure. We have we provide a free dump station. So when you come in, if you have a full tank, you can dump. Or when you leave, you can dump with your full tank. If you don't want to do it yourself, we do have a service that comes around. They charge, and they'll come and do it right for you, right at your campsite. One of, the, uh, one of the concerns I know my family's had in the past when camping with a family and others might have is if they're bringing a family member who has special needs, particularly oh, yeah. if they either can't walk a very long distance or if they're in a wheelchair. And that really shouldn't hold people back from RVing or camping, should it? No, it shouldn't. And we all, I think the most important thing about it is just ask, let us know at the office that there's a problem. If they need a campsite that's closer, because the wheelchairs are tough in this gravel pit to move around, then they will get you the best site that we can. If they need a ride, if you're way down back and you have a hard time walking up, we'll give you a ride. Just call. We have golf carts going back and forth all day long. Now, you mentioned two things I wanted to touch on. One is um, you sell firewood. If I'm not mistaken, the state of New Hampshire does not allow campers to bring firewood in from other states. They to don't. Yeah, that's why we provide that service so that campers don't get, if they do try, they will get caught. The patrollies are out there all the time. One of the other things I've noticed in other campgrounds, and some people not accustomed to RVing or who don't RV a lot, they might have concerns, especially if they have a family member with health concerns is if they need emergency services. Yeah. Can emergency services get through? And would there be a delay? Yeah. And could you address those concerns for anybody who might be thinking about, you know, RVing? Yeah, the town of Loudoun, they double or tri triple staff their police force during these NASCAR events. And so you never have to worry about that. The emergency services are located right around the corner. I call 911 and they're here within five minutes. And they come with a lot of people. It's never an issue. It's never been an issue in the past noticed when I was here this weekend, aside from the race activities, just within the campground itself, you had a lot of activities for the campers. Would you like to tell us about some of those? Yes. We, we do a free pancake breakfast Saturday mornings, which is a big turnout. Everyone loves it. We get maple syrup donated from one of our campers, which is the sweetest thing in the world. Um, we do a DJ, and then we have a live band on one night, and it is fun. People love it. We put up a big tent. And everyone just comes up and has a great time. Now, how many campers do you have here during events here normally? We could probably fit about 500 campers in here. Can you describe when you get, say, 500 campers in here? What's the atmosphere like? 
What's sort of the feel or the culture that develops when you have that many people RVing here? Yeah, it's a little crazy. It gets hectic at times, but the thing, everyone is just so nice. Our campers, I don't know where they come from, but they come from good grain. Everybody is willing to lend a hand. Everyone's courteous to their neighbors. I seldom have any complaints. Everyone, I think, is just here to have a great time. They're here to enjoy a NASCAR event, and the camping's just a perk, you know? We have a lot of big groups that camp together. They just, they come with pools and card games and board games and ping pong tables, and it's amazing to see the setup, you know? Well, it is a lot of fun. It and, is. and I know when, when I'm at any campground, it's, you tend to form friendships and socialize, I think, yes. a lot more easily than you do on the outside. Whereas most people have a guard up. When you get in this atmosphere, it's suddenly everybody's willing to socialize and congregate. And I think that's something that sort of brought me into it, too. It is, yeah. I, we have a lot of campers that started off just coming and having one site. And then they are now they're best friends with a new person that moved in and they camped together like all through over the country. One thing I want to um, talk about that we've talked about mentioning is even though most campgrounds have their own specific rules, there's generally a universal set of rules for campground etiquette. Yes, yeah, so we have quiet hours between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. and I go around and patrol and quiet down groups that may be a little rowdy or shut off generators if people forgot. Um, you know, it's important to do that because generators are loud. Mm -hmm. And they are. They'll wake you up at night. And you won't realize it's loud till it's shut off. But when the campground's quiet at midnight, then you really, you can hear them. And so it's just important that people are able to sleep and have have the best time possible. Well, thank you so much for taking time out to talk with me.